Hi, Carl here for Pro VTV, and today we're taking a look at the new Sony Z280. So in many ways, this is their successor to the very popular X200. Um, they've definitely taken a lot of cues from user feedback from that camera when they're designing this one. But essentially, this camera can be summarized by two things. Firstly, it's the world's first three-chip 4K camcorder. And secondly, to me, it fits in the same place in their lineup as the FS7 Mark II. It's a good industry standard broadcast camera. But this obviously is a completely different form factor. This is a fixed lens camcorder with a smaller chip, and that one is a large sensor interchangeable cinematic camera. And the reason that I think they sit at the same place for many people is that they include the same codecs. This has the same codex as the FS7 Mark II, that XAVCI, 600 megabit a second, 4K, 10 bit, 422 in 60p. It's the full whack, everything you could ask for from a 4K broadcast codec so I think this is going to fit right at home in a lot of people's workflows so if you're looking for a fixed lens convenient camcorder for broadcast work this is probably one of the best choices on the market right now We have Sony's fantastic variable ND technology here, which we've seen on quite a few of their cameras now, but I just absolutely love using. I really do think this should be on every video camera out there. What it is, for those of you who don't know, is um, rather than just having the three stops of normal ND levels that you get on most video cameras, where you just have hard stops of big chunks, you can either choose to have that or you can swap it over to variable mode and then precisely control the amount of ND that you need on a little wheel on the side. What this lets you do is it means that you can set your um, ISO, your gain and your, um, your aperture to be exactly what you want them to be for either depth of field or diffraction, things like that, whatever it takes for you to get the best image and then control your exposure purely using the variable ND. And it can do that automatically for you with auto ND or you do it manually with a dial here. It's just a fantastic way of working when you're outside and definitely gets the best results. One area Sony have definitely improved on is the autofocus. It seems much snappier, much more responsive and much more reliable than some autofocus systems we've seen on their previous camcorders. It's still not quite as controllable as the autofocus systems on, say, their Z90 camcorder or um, Canon's ones like their Cinema lineup or the XF405. And the big reason for this is the touchscreen. This doesn't have a touchscreen and it's brilliant to be able to touch things to choose what to focus. In fact, you can't even choose what to focus with the joystick. It will only decide for you what to focus. So you simply have your autofocus on or off. There's no further way of controlling it than that. The exception to this is the face detect because Sony have given us some really fantastic face detect autofocus. Now this can obviously be off or it can be in face priority where it would focus on anything it wants and then focus prioritize a face when it finds one or face only where it's manual focus until it finds a face where it will automatically pull to that face for you. It can choose up to eight faces and you can um, swap between them with the joystick on the back. Plus you can register a face. So say you're shooting a documentary and you've got a presenter or a main subject, something like that, and you want to register their face in here so that if it's, they're in a group, it will always prioritize them and focus on them above any of the other people in shot. You can do that, which is a fantastic system. It's really, really useful. I do wish though it was slightly more controllable and they gave you a box which you could move about and a, and a touchscreen would be even better, but it's definitely an improvement on some of their older camcorders. We 
have a 17 times optical zoom lens here. So that's a 30.3 to 515 millimeter equivalent in super 35 terms. Um, now, obviously that's in 4K. When you're in 1080p mode, you basically get a two times extender for free because you can just crop into that 4K image in camera and just carry on your zoom lens without losing any quality. And that effectively turns it into a 30.3 to 1030 millimeter zoom, which is pretty crazy. Um, but I'm perfectly happy with 17 times for my 4K. I've got no problems there in terms of zoom range. I do wish it was that little bit wider though, 30.3, that could be a little bit wider, but that's fairly commonplace on cameras such as this. And you, of course, you can always use a wide angle adapter on the front for those wide shots. You also get three control rings, one for aperture at the back, zoom, and then focus at the front. They've all got nice hard stops and the focus at the front can be pushed and pulled forward or back. When it's pushed forward, it's your autofocus and a fly-by-wire manual focus override. And then you pull it back, it's a nice true linear manual focus with hard stops, which is really nice to manually focus with. The camera's full of nice little design tweaks that make your life easier when you're out there filming. The big one, the one that they're talking about the most in their publicity, is now having two MI shoes on the top. Sony's MI shoe is a fantastic technology that lets you pass power and data to one of their accessories through a shoe mount on the top. This is used for their lab mic system, um, which is the most commonly used one, or an XLR box to take more XLR inputs in, or one of their top lights. Now, the reason that they've got two here is so that if you're using one of those top lights, you can have the top light at the front and a sound interface at the back. You don't have to choose one or the other, which is absolutely fantastic. The audio controls are also really nicely placed and positioned. They've got a lovely door, which means you can see everything, but without touching it accidentally and everything's laid out exactly how it should be. I really like that there's little auto switches on the actual physical dials and the amount of resistance it takes to push it over to that. You're definitely not gonna be changing anything by accident and it's gonna be really easy to see exactly what everything's set to. There's gonna be no hidden surprises there. One thing I did miss a little criticism is the placement of the record buttons when you're on a tripod like I am here. The record buttons are one on the side grip and one on the top. Now, when you're handheld, this makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna be, my thumb is right there when I'm using this grip, and my thumb's right here when I'm using the top handle. But when I'm on a tripod, I've got my hand on the pan bar down here, and then my hand on this side of the camera. And there's lots of control here, but nothing to start or stop recording. So that is a little bit of a shame. I wish they'd included maybe a record button down here. That would have been really nice. Another fantastic addition is this USB port on the back. Now this can be used for data transfer. So if you plug in a hard drive or a USB thumbstick, any sort of USB storage host, you're gonna be able to copy across your footage from your SBIOS cards onto that media, which is amazing for on-site backups and even to save you having to offload the footage when you get back, when you're in the car on the way back from the job, you can have your camera copying across to your hard drives ready to go in the car during the journey. So that is a really useful small touch. Media, I touched on it very lightly there, but this is S by S cards. This is of course, the reason that this camera can do everything that it can do is because S by S is a very, very fast, very reliable, very professional media system. And the other nice thing about it is that they make so many adapters for it. So you can adapt to XQD cards and you can adapt to SD cards. So if you're using say an FS7, you might want to stick with XQD cards across all your cameras. You can do that here. Maybe you've got an FS5 or an older camcorder and you want to do, use SD cards. You can do that here. Now, of course, you're gonna lose out on some features when you do that because neither of them are quite as fast. They don't have that read and write speeds of S by S cards. So make sure you look into and do some research on what you're gonna miss by doing that. Um, but I'm really happy with S by S as a choice here. It's a very professional media.
Sony have made sure that the Z280 has got everything you need for HDR work. They've given you HLG in different flavors, as well as S-Log3 and lookup tables to actually monitor that log footage. So it's got everything that you need for working in HDR, so regardless of whether your um, broadcaster is asking for HLG deliverables or log deliverables, this is gonna be able to do that for you. So for HDR production, it's got pretty much everything you could ask for nowadays. Overall, I think that could be said for pretty much any sort of broadcast work. This is a really capable, ready camera and is probably the best fixed lens camera on the market right now for broadcast work without stepping up to large and expensive shoulder mounted cameras. But what do you guys think of the Z280? Has it got everything you need for your work? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to buy one, of course, just ring the sales team up or the links to our product pages are in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.